the sun. It's the source of all heat, light, and life in the solar system. It seems an obvious question to ask. Does the sun have something to do with climate? The answer is, of course, yes. It's absolutely central. But a more useful question to ask might be, does the sun have anything to do with the unequivocal warming of the last 100 years? Here, scientists can give us some answers. Our technology is very sophisticated in this area, and solar activity has been accurately measured using both ground and space-based systems for decades, and no change in solar output has been detected that could be responsible for the observed global warming, especially in the last 30 years. Moreover, when we look at the way the atmosphere is warming, there seems to be a pattern. If the sun were warming the atmosphere from space, we would expect to see a, a uniform warming pattern all the way down. But that's not what we see. In fact, what we observe is the troposphere, the lower part of the atmosphere that we live in, seems to be warming. But above that, the upper part of the atmosphere, the stratosphere, seems to show a cooling. This pattern is the thermodynamic fingerprint the smoking gun, the DNA evidence of human-caused greenhouse warming. We've observed other patterns as well. For instance, the planet is warming at the same rate at night as during the day. And there's more warming in winter than in summer. And again, there's more warming at the poles than at the equator. All of these indicators run counter to what would be expected of a solar influence. But let's take a look at some of the empirical data that scientists have developed. In this case, published by the British Royal Society. Here it is. TSI, total solar irradiance. Everything that comes out of the sun for the last three decades. Many of you know that the sun has 11 year cycles, and here they are. Let's take a look at global temperatures during the same time period. In marked contrast to the sun's steady activity, we see a constant rise in temperature decade after decade. But there are some more exotic claims made by the hardcore denialists. Here's a clip from my favorite piece of climate denial pop culture, the great global warming swindle, which claims to be the ultimate debunking of all things related to climate change, but has been a gold mine for folks like me. This very cool graphic purports to be a reconstruction of global temperatures in turquoise versus solar activity in red. It's not solar activity like you and I think of, like sunshine. It's a measure of the frequency of sunspot cycles. And there's an arcane theory involving sunspots, cosmic rays, and atmospheric particles that is said to influence climate. The film was shown not long ago on Australian TV, and the producer was interviewed in relation to this graph. The journalist said how impressive the graph was, and certainly seemed to show a strong relationship between sunspots and global temperature. However, he wondered why the graph seemed to stop in 1975. The producer did not have a satisfactory answer, so our intrepid journalists went to the leading databases and filled in the remaining three decades. And when you do that, you'll see why they clipped the graph at that point. Because the supposed relationship completely breaks down for the last 30 years. It's called cherry picking taking the piece of data that supports your theory and leaving the rest out. And you find it in the climate denialist literature over and over and over again. In fact, the most recent study we have on the sun's relationship to climate comes from NASA and the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory. And the results are very clear. The sun, if anything, contributes a very slight overall cooling over the last 25 years and none of the natural processes can account for the overall warming trend in global surface temperatures. In future installments, we'll talk more about the sun, the other influences on Earth's climate, the way they work together, and the way man's influence has affected them in recent centuries. Keep coming back to the climate denial crock of the week for the very best explanation of what real science and real scientists have to say about the changing state of our planet. Keep sending in your comments, and thanks for listening.